Hey everyone, it's Ben Watson here with Perfect Feet, and today on the show I have Zach Braxton. He just graduated. He plays basketball for Weber State, or played basketball for Weber State. I am absolutely stoked to have him on the show. I've had the opportunity to build him orthotics a couple years ago, and um, the very first time that I met him, he came into the office, and Zach is... Um, he carries a big presence with him, and he's, he's absolutely one of the friendliest guys you've ever met, and he was extremely courteous to me, and I mean, it's hard not to like a guy Appreciate like that. that. <laughs> and um, so the, the first thing that I wanted to talk about mm -hmm. is how did you cultivate that? Like, you, you have to know that that you're um, outgoing mm -hmm. and, and you're very respectful to people. Mm -hmm. How has that always been in you or? Um, I've always been kind of a people person, but um, my, my parents, you know, really raised me to be, you know, treat everybody with respect and, you know, really live by the golden real, rule and, you know, treat people the way you want to be treated. Um, you know, since I was a little kid, just the utmost respect to them and the utmost respect to other adults and the utmost respect to your peers is, you know, how you want to move through life because the type of energy that you put out into the world is the type of energy that you're going to get back. I, I believe that, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so you have your parents to thank for that? Definitely, yeah. My mom, uh, my mom Eileen, and my dad, Keith, um, you know, two huge role models to me in my life just for, you know, how I should carry myself. Um, professionally, uh, socially, and just in everyday situations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that that's carried over into basketball. Mm -hmm. and, tell, and to be, because those qualities are, you're a natural leader with those mm -hmm. qualities. So tell me how that's um, translated into your basketball career. So that's, you know, that's one thing I've actually had a problem with at some, some points is, you know, I, I try and be, you know, such a nice guy. Um, in basketball, you can't always you can't always be like that. And so, um, over time, I've had to learn to you know turn off the the nice Zach Braxton and turn into a little bit of a different type of player on the floor. But um, as far as my relationships with my teammates and my coaches um, over the years, I, I have always felt um, like I have a strong leadership presence, and I try and I try and bring that every day, and you know use the the things that my parents taught me to. Um, relate to people and you know how to interact with people um, I, I feel like it's been you know like I've had kind of a, a gift in understanding how to treat certain people like how to get certain reactions out of people as far as basketball goes and yeah mm -hmm. um, where do you think that comes from um, I'm not really sure I think I think some people just have it I'm, I might just have it I'm, I'm not too sure um, but you got to learn how to read people over time and and see what they react to and mm -hmm. w what was your degree in? I got a degree uh, in communication with an emphasis in public relations and advertising. Do you think that that's why you went into that then? Um, I think so. I, I started off in the business program and I just, it just wasn't for me. Um, that's what my dad got his degree in. And I was just, I was like, yeah, that might, that might work. That might um, set me up for my future. Uh, but I didn't really like it. And then I, I looked around and I, I talked to the people in the communication department and it just it felt right and i learned you know what public relations was and more about advertising and, and all that and just the other classes that you take in communications i just kind of learned that that's something that i could be good at yeah mm -hmm. yeah um i was talking to someone that i was going to interview you and they 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 commented on how much of a hard worker you are mm -hmm. um, on the court like they mm -hmm. really they were like he hustles every play mm -hmm. and um, so your work ethic tell me about mm -hmm. that um, on court um, on the floor um, I've never been like the most like just purely talented guy um, the talents that I do have I had to cultivate them over time and so um, you know my work ethic in in practice and in workouts and in the game um, it's all about like being Better. I always want to get better at what I'm doing, and um, I think that really drives me to work hard and never take a possession off. You got to kind of play like you might never play again because you never know what's going to happen. You really don't. Mm -mm. And you're playing against guys bigger than you. Mm -hmm. often, Some, yeah, often, yeah, a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so you so you realize that you have to work harder mm -hmm. to maximize the talents that you were given. Mm -hmm. 
Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. When mm-hmm. did when did you realize that? Um, it it was in it was early in high school. Um, I used to like to shoot threes and play on the perimeter and all that. And my dad told me, he said, son, you're bigger than anybody out there right now. Like I'm not anymore in college, but at high school at the time, you're bigger than anybody out there. You're stronger than anybody out there. You need to go score down around the rim, get as many rebounds as you can and, you know, alter shots. And that's how, you know, you're going to get to the next level in basketball. And I think, as time went on, I kind of figured out what my what my niche was and what my role was as a basketball player, and that's, you know, kind of where my my effort comes from. Is I know I have to give maximum effort to get, you know, what I can out of my game. How old were you when that happened? Uh, that I'd say change? I'd say fourteen or fifteen, somewhere in there. And then, did mm-hmm. you find joy with the the change? I I did. At first, it was it was weird because you know when you're playing with a bunch of guys who shoot threes, it's like, well, you want, I want to shoot threes too. Um, yeah. but kind of, I kind of started to embrace the dirty work and embrace the, the hard work and, and the things that other players don't really want to do. And it was rewarding because it made me a better player. I actually ended up scoring more points and rebounding the ball more and ultimately getting a college scholarship, um, because of that, that was style a big, of play. That was a big deal mm-hmm. for, extremely. Yeah. when did you start playing? Uh, um, I started playing, you know, I, I've always loved basketball. I watched Space Jam on VHS when I was a little kid really? until the VHS tape broke, actually. Um, but, you know, I've always been around the game. My dad would always have me shooting hoops in the driveway and stuff like that. But um, I never played, like, on a travel team or real competitive team uh, until I was about 13, I think, the summer after seventh grade. Um, Who were I your heroes? Playing. Uh, Michael Jordan growing up because yeah. of Space Jam. That's when I learned yeah. about him. Um, one not basketball related is Tiger Woods. Uh, I always loved watching him as a kid. I'm really into golf and he was a hero of mine just because of his dominating presence on the golf course. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so we're, we're talking, um, 10 years ago mm-hmm. in, in you're in, how old are you now? I'm 23. Okay, so mm-hmm. ten years ago, you're you're thirteen, mm-hmm. which is hard for me to believe. <laughs> ten years ago, so two thousand nine, you're is is that right? Two two thousand nine, yeah. you're thirteen mm-hmm. years old. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's hard for me to believe. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you're you're looking at Tiger Woods, Michael Jordan, mm-hmm. and who else? Um, like, did you have a style of play that you always kind of thought that I want to um, mimic that or I, I want to aspire to that? I always wanted to be like Shaq, but I had no chance because I was never going to be that big. <laughs> I mean, that guy's massive, but... Um, He's a monster. Right? Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I never really modeled my game after anybody in particular. Um, I just wanted to be, you know, the best I could be and, and get the most, you know, get kind of create my own style. Um, and in the game today, there's not a lot of, you know, true post players anymore. A lot of guys don't play with their back to the basket. Um, they do play way off the block and shoot threes and drive the ball. And, you know, I need to add some of that into my game um, for the next level. But uh, I've made a living off of playing around the rim and being stronger and more physical than other players. Yeah, you, mm-hmm. you look stronger when you're out there, too. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. your shoulders are huge. Mm-hmm. I was noticing that when I was at, at a game, and like, I mean, you can just totally tell where you are mm-hmm. down there <laughs> and moving around. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so uh, tell me about some highlights of uh, your college career. What, like, tell me some moments that you loved. Um, number one moment for sure was um, winning the Big Sky Tournament um, my redshirt freshman year. That uh, was with. Uh, Joel Ballenboy, Jeremy Singlin, Rashad Giddens, Kendall Hill, um, Dusty Baker, all those guys um, who have been here and, and gone and are now on to doing other great things. But, um, you know, that winning that tournament and going to the, the March Madness tournament was incredible. Um, it's something you dream of when you're a kid. Like, really, when you're watching college basketball and you're watching March Madness as a as a 12 year old or 13 year old it's like I'm, i want to be there someday yeah mm-hmm. i actually this is a funny story i had a, a friend of mine my freshman year of high school where it was march the snow was kind of melting in colorado and we were playing um we were playing basketball in his, his driveway and we kind of got mad at each other and we were you know going back and forth at each other and 
they were, he was telling me how I wasn't very good. And I said, you know, in, in four or five years, you're going to be sitting in that living room right there. And I'm going to be, you're going to be watching me on TV and March Madness. And I, it was kind of funny. Um, he didn't remember it, but I texted him after we played in March Madness. And I said, bro, I, I, I told you that then. And I've thought about that a lot. Like that was really a driving force for me to get here and do that. So that was probably the most incredible experience for me was playing in March Madness. What was the energy like? It was... Compared to like a regular game? I was a lot, you know, a lot of people say they're not nervous going to, I, you know, I had nerves going into that game. We were playing the two seed um, on our side of the bracket, uh, Xavier at the time. And that was, they had some big guys on that team who were, um, they were talking about going to be in the NBA and, and all that and playing against those guys was, I knew it was going to be a challenge, but once I settled into the game, it was just awesome. I never felt more competitive. I, I wanted to win so bad. I wanted to, we didn't end up winning the game, obviously, but really, really wanted to win. And it was, it was a pretty cool experience. Yeah, like you were talking about nerves. I could mm -hmm. never, like if there's even a hint of pressure, mm -hmm. I fold completely <laughs> in like golf or anything mm -hmm. else. So how do you, is that, how do you deal with that? How do you, cult did you have to cultivate just the, the nerves side of things? A little bit. And, um, you know, for the first part of my career at Weaver, uh, before games, I get a little short of breath. And I was trying to figure out, you know, what, what the heck's the problem? I'm starting a game. I got to be able to breathe. Um, and it was because <laughs> yeah, it was it was because of nerves and um, the athletic department actually um, has a, a mental performance sports performance uh, sports psychologist coach uh, by the name of Riley Jensen um, who I talked with uh, throughout this last season and he helped me kind of put things into perspective like it's okay to be nervous but like turn it into excitement and that helped me calm down a little bit before games but also have the like excited energy that i needed to to play well so how do i do that um it's it's funny it's it's actually really easy like he he told us a story about um i think it was we, we watched a, a simon sinek uh ted talk i don't know if you know who that is we watched his one of his ted talks and he was saying uh he was on he was, gets nervous flying and he was on an airplane and Usually, you know, when the, the uh, turbulence starts, he gets, he tenses up and he gets real nervous. But he said in the plane out loud, I'm excited. And it kind of cooled the, the energy in the plane and everybody else was. And so before games this year, when I was nervous, I was, I'd say to the guys, I was like, this is exciting. Like, this is a really special opportunity. Let's, let's go enjoy this. And that helped me, that helped me settle into the game a little easier. Yeah, turn mm -hmm. it into a positive. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we we just finished playing a little basketball, mm -hmm. and I was thinking about it. Like, I haven't touched a basketball in ten years, mm -hmm. and before that, it was probably another ten years. Mm -hmm. and so it's been a long time, and I wasn't good before. <laughs> so, like, it's you know, it's probably pretty embarrassing. But I was thinking about it as we were playing that. Mm -hmm. um, like what a cool experience that I, I get to like just hang out with you and play and you are super nice to me and, <laughs> and don't beat me up. How many people would just dream of being able to do that? And so I feel I feel mm -hmm. very blessed. So thank you. Well, for I, no, that. I appreciate that. I mean, I, I just thought it was a good time. Honestly, <laughs> I just thought it was fun. But um, no, it's you know, like you said, it's it's a blessing. Like I've sometimes um, every once in a while, uh, Damian Lillard, a former Weber State player is now, you know, all NBA guy. Um, he'll come back in the summer. And you know, my first year here, he played pickup with us one day. And I, I kind of felt the same thing. I was like, man, this is this is a privilege. You don't I don't know how my at the time I was a freshman. I don't know how my career is going to turn out. I don't know if I'll ever have this opportunity again. This is this is special to see, yeah. you know, how your game has to develop to be a successful player. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK, so let's let's talk a little bit about um, What's you're graduated? Mm -hmm. What's next? What's after this? So uh, just recently, just last week, um, I signed with an agency uh, called JCK Sports Group. Um, they have offices in Europe and the United States. And what they do is they place um, European players, but um, a lot of American players, college players uh, to go play professionally. Um, right now, for me, it looks like that's going to be overseas, um, maybe Europe or Asia or South America. 
Um, I'm not exactly sure where yet. I'll probably know in July, but um, it's well, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, this is like this moment. You're you're graduated. Mm -hmm. You're you're done at Weber State, mm -hmm. and um, that chapter of your life is 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 finished. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of I mean, it's a big deal. I, mm -hmm. I feel like. And then the the new chapter of possible professional mm -hmm. career is opening up. Mm -hmm. um, what what are you gonna miss about the, your time here at Weber? Um, I'm going to miss the community a lot. Um, I know a lot of people just, you know, at the school, um, around the community. At, um, I worked at Ogden Golf and Country Club, so I met a lot of people there. I worked at the Barn uh, Golf Course in North Ogden, and I, I have people who have treated me like family um, since I've been here, and it's it's been, you know, the kindness of the people in, in Utah is extremely impressive. Um, so I'm going to miss that. I'm going to miss having a team full of guys who like you get to grow with as you, as you go totally. through your seasons. It, it, it's pr the professional game, you're not, especially in Europe, you're not on the same team very long. Guys are coming in and out. Um, it's it's going to be different, but I'll miss that, that camaraderie and, and brotherhood. That mm -hmm. sense of community. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I think that this area offers a sense of community. Mm -hmm. um, it's a small community, mm -hmm. and you are absolutely part of the community, mm -hmm. and people, you know, recognize you, mm -hmm. and they, they've watched you for the last four years. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, I love that aspect of South Ogden and mm -hmm. Ogden as well, is that that's why I have a home here, is mm -hmm. because of the sense of community. I, I love it, and the it really outdoor is. stuff that we can do. Exactly. It really is great. Um, just it, like, like I said earlier, just the kindness, the pure kindness of people who are, you know, willing to go out of their way to come say hello to you and say, you know, hey, good game. And just, you know, just have a conversation with you. And there, there's a lot of opportunities where if you play bad, somebody could come up to you and say, hey, you need to be better. You know, at some other schools, I, I would bet that some of the players get that. Yeah. I've never received that once here. And I've, I've had my fair share of bad games where somebody could have said something to me, but it was always encouragement and kindness and that speaks volumes to me so yeah mm -hmm. yeah totally um so we we were talking just before this and um i we perfect feet um mm -hmm. so we we ought, we have a test pilot squad mm -hmm. i dubbed it the test pilot squad mm -hmm. and so we we sponsor um professional athletes and um, local athletes and build a foot orthotics for them and mm -hmm. um i offered and you accepted mm -hmm. to to join our test pilot squad mm -hmm. and um i'm absolutely stoked for that i think because um you showed me orthotics mm -hmm. right before this and it, it, you guys they they were destroyed <laughs> <laughs> like he's worn through everything mm -hmm. and you know probably a couple seasons old i, I yep. would think mm -hmm. and um so getting you some fresh inserts is probably going to be helpful as it well. will be for sure yeah. and i really appreciate that like that's that's important to me. I remember I came to you when I got fit for those ones and my toe was all messed up and my Achilles was giving me some pain and um, it helped. You know, it's, I haven't had, I haven't had foot pain. I haven't had back pain, like all that the past, you know, this past season and the half of the season before, before we got those in there. And it's been, it's been really beneficial for me. So I'm really excited for this opportunity. Yeah, awesome. So mm -hmm. yeah, just think anything that you need foot wise, mm -hmm. I'll take care of it. It's all taken care of. Awesome. And at your level of play, you gotta have some extra support in there just because mm -hmm. of the stress and stuff that, that you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, so so um, other than that, mm -hmm. um, we, we were talking that you're an avid golfer as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and people, <laughs> you, you may not know this. Um, I was actually talking to a friend, he's like, I've heard he's a really good golfer. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, tell us about golf. Um, I grew up uh, playing golf with my dad. Um, he took me to the range to watch him hit balls when I was, you know, before I could talk, before I could, like, hold a conversation with somebody. And um, I started uh, swinging, I think, on my own at three or four and was out of the range with him and started to play um, as I grew up and we sometimes just play on the weekends and then I play a little bit more and I played for one year in high school and wasn't very good at all. Um, I came to really, yeah, yeah, no, I was probably, I was probably like a 17 handicap in, in high school. And then I, I came to Weber. Um, I, my friend Lee Shepard, uh, we sat in some classes together and he played for the golf team. Um, he was living at a house, uh, with my two current roommates, uh, Alex Herzog and Sean Badger. And 
they invited me over on Halloween once for a little get together, and and one of their their roommates was moving out, and they they're all you know they're all on the golf team, and they're like, it'd be cool if you lived here. You know, we're friends. Why don't you move in? And so I moved in a couple of years ago, and since then I've played a ton of golf with those guys, and my handicap has gotten down to currently a three. So I. It's been I've been successful as of that's, late, but not always very good. So that's great. So mm-hmm. what's what's this your strength in your game? Uh, I hit it a long ways. <laughs> how far? I you know I was gonna say because mm-hmm. it looks like you would hit it a long ways. How far do you? Do you so the ball? At, at this altitude, probably around three twenty, three twenty five. Wow. In yeah, in Utah and Colorado, it's. It's crazy the game of golf how different it is when you're playing in California or someplace else. You don't hit it nearly as far. It's through that humidity it knocks a lot off. But um, so yeah. how far do you hit your seven iron? My seven iron goes about one ninety five two hundred. Wow, uh-huh. that changes everything. It does. It does. Yeah. Around here you don't hit a lot of long irons because it's like driver wedge or driver nine iron. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's great. Mm-hmm. Um, and relationship status for um, it, yeah. what's your relationship status? Um, I have a girlfriend. We've been dating for almost two years now. Um, she's a well was an athlete too. She's still extremely athletic, but she um, she played soccer at the University of North Carolina um, for three years, and then at the University of Colorado for one. Um, she's from Sandy and went to Juan Diego High School down there, just south of Salt Lake. Cool. Mm-hmm. Cool. Emily. Emily, mm-hmm. yes, yep. definitely. Yep. Um, and siblings? I have a little sister. Um, she turns 21 in July, and she's going to be a senior at Montana State this year, and she plays for their women's basketball team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And My sister, Blair. Yeah, what mm-hmm. does she? she uh, she's a she's a four, five, kind of, she's a post player like me. She's about six foot two. She's tall for a, for a woman, but... Um, her game's a little different. She's more fluid than I am. Not as strong, but very has a very very good finesse game. Did you guys mm-hmm. play a lot together? She wouldn't. She wouldn't play with me. She hated it. Really? <laughs> Growing up, we we didn't get along on the basketball court. So she kind of did her thing, and I did my thing. And um, we went to the same high school, and she hated being Zach Braxton's little sister. So she went out and made a name for herself. And they uh, their team was actually more successful in in high school than our high school team was. That's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And and what about you guys' relationship now? Oh, we're, we're extremely close. We talk on the phone a ton. Um, she came down and visited after our seasons were over uh, just for a few days. Um, the nice thing about both of us being in the Big Sky is when we go play in the Big Sky tournament, we can see each other and watch each other play. Um, this year it didn't happen because they, uh, they lost on the day that we got there. So sadly, the schedules didn't line up. But the past two years, we got to watch them play, and that was—it's really cool to me to see my sister play college basketball in person. So, yeah, I mm-hmm. bet. I bet that. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, tell me something or, or about about you that people may not know about you. Okay, so outside of golf, um, I like to cook. A lot of people don't know I, I like to cook, and I like—I really enjoy good food. I had—I had a problem. A couple of years ago where I, I enjoyed good good food too much, but I've lost a lot of weight since then. I've tried to learn how to cook healthier options and stuff like that. So I enjoy I enjoy cooking and eating good food. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So nutrition's actually been a big part of, of your mm-hmm. um, the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. It had to be because, you know, my my family is we're naturally, you know, from my dad's side, we're naturally big boned and kinda kinda heavier. Yeah. Um and so I got up to about 265 pounds a couple years ago um i came here a little heavier than that and it just it's not beneficial for your your feet and your knees and your back how much do you weigh i weigh 240 now wow Mm -hmm. and it was it was you know i didn't change how hard i worked out i've always worked out hard but it was just eating better you know smaller portions more healthier food um yeah it helped it helped a lot Okay, so the nutrition side of things has mm-hmm. been big in my life as well, mm-hmm. and um, my my wife, um, Joey, mm-hmm. absolutely takes care of everything uh-huh. in that realm. Mm-hmm. She really does, and she's she's a trooper. So we've been eating really healthy for the past two years, and mm-hmm. I've I've lost about twenty to thirty pounds just because mm-hmm. I got kind of heavy after we had kids, and so the and it seems like everyone's like nutrition is just a really big deal for everyone mm-hmm. and so how did you learn um who taught you because I, I don't feel like it was when when i grew up it wasn't a, it wasn't a big thing mm-hmm. um 
and so yeah, if you could tell me about that. So there really, it's really been three people. So um, first off, uh, John Henderson was our um, our strength coach. Uh, my first two two and a half years here, um, and he's now at Duquesne, and he's a he's a strength coach and um, associate athletic director out there. But he, you know, he taught me what to eat and how to eat to to like build mass and, and muscle mass and lose fat at the same time. Um, so he taught me the importance of it. Um, our strength coach now, Derek Rosinski, um, the same thing. He's, he, he gave me a packet a couple weeks ago as I'm trying to prepare for a professional career here on you know what kind of calories to shoot for each day, what kind of protein intake, carbohydrate intake, supplements, all that type of stuff, what I need to be taking. Awesome. Mm -hmm. awesome. And then uh, Julie Hansen, um, who is a professor here at Weber State and also a um, a dietitian and a nutritionist. Yeah, I know Julie. Yeah, she um, she comes and talks to the basketball team every year about what to eat and what to shop for and what to look for when you're going to the grocery store. And so that uh, the co the combination of those three have helped me a ton. Influenced you. Mm -hmm. That's that's great. Mm -hmm. So I I think we're out of time. Okay. Um, I I actually could just continue <laughs> on talking. This is this has been great. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you so much for um, hanging out with oh, me thank today you for having and, me. and doing this. Thank um, you so much, Ben. Yeah, I really look forward to um, you destroying my orthotics <laughs> in the future. So um, thank you, everyone. And uh, if you, uh, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope everyone has a great day.